have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. about Moonbase Alpha. What we have here is another Victory Point game, which I'm a huge fan of Victory Point games in general. The games are usually solo-based. This is my go-to solo-based company. But in addition, there usually is a pretty solid game there. Um, in this case, Moonbase Alpha, we get a two-player game. Now, I had done a written review of Plants vs. Zombies, which you can go check out on my other reviews. For another two-player war-ish type game. Now this one actually says war game on the side. So I'm just going, can you see that? War game. So I'm just going to call this a war game. It plays a lot like a pretty simple little chit war game. I haven't played a lot of those. I've played Combat Commander before. I like Memoir 44 Battle War. But I, I like the idea of a lot of war games more than sitting down and playing them. With the dice rolls and stuff, it just feels... A little random and randomest to me. Um, what you're going to get here is what is good and bad. Okay, so it's good that you have these cards that can upgrade. They're randomly shuffled and given out, so everybody gets five they can utilize during the game. I feel like I feel like I, I don't know because I didn't play enough to figure out all the balancing issues and blah blah blah. But I feel like if somebody got a better Random section of five cards, that's a pretty good advantage. Probably won't win, win you the game, but it's a pretty good start. Um, it might be a good strategy to play to your cards. That might be good. Um, otherwise, this is kind of an area control game where you're battling, eventually, to get some of those spaces. Now, in my plays, I found it pretty good to get six dollars and raise that stock price up and there's some random elements that can bring it down um the other player then needs to get over to you and attack pretty quickly if they see you doing that so I, I think the balancing is there i think there's a lot going on um it it's a lot more symmetrical than asymmetrical i think the cards are the only part that really make it too asymmetrical would be you get a random five cards that you can upgrade to later Otherwise, I'm pretty sure it's pretty symmetrical. Uh, I, th I think one side has a slight advantage when you start the game by the placement, uh, but that's just my thoughts. Otherwise, it's a neat little quick hour. Could go, the box says 90 minutes. I think an hour is more likely to just battle it out and slug it out over this. And it's going to come down to a lot of dice rolling and, and what the charts do and what they say. I think there's a pretty decent game in here. I think people who like this sort of thing or want something, you know, I'm done with Memoir 44. I can't go to ASL or whatever those big games are. And I want something a little small, just to bite off a little bit. I think Moonbase Alpha can be that. It's kind of got this cool little theme. You got the media play on there where you don't want the media to see you kill people. When you do, it brings your stock price down even more. Um, the rules were simple. I had a couple things I didn't quite understand. I was able to play through it and I think I made sense of it. The player aids are really good. It gives you every bit of information that you need to play the game. If you're looking for that jump from a Memoir 44 and you want to try a chit based game, I think Moonbase Alpha could be it for you. I think eventually if you like this sort of game, you'll be ready to move on to something else or you might figure out, well, this is this is my sweet spot right where I want to be. I could see a, uh, two spouses sitting down at night playing something like this um, or a parent and a child perhaps when they get to that level. Otherwise, I, you know, I'm going to purge it. It's not for me. I didn't enjoy the decisions, but... I don't enjoy these games. These games are not the type of games that go for me, but I definitely like to try them out. So I definitely wanted to try this game out. I think the cover is super cool. I like the look of it. 
reading the designer notes. He seems like Chris. His name's Chris Taylor. He seems like a wonderful guy. Had to put a lot of heart into this. Um, the game works. It's solid. People who like this sort of thing are going to like it. It's going to be on the lighter end, probably for the war gamers. Uh, it's a good stepping stone for people, but it's not for me. It's just not, and that takes nothing away from the game. I like the chits. How how when you go into battle, you got you know range that the I say the crawler would be at the MCU. Um, you don't know exactly if it's a two, three, four, or five or whatever. So you flip it over when the battle occurs. Um, now the rules didn't say whether you did flip those back over. So we just left them up because we knew what they were, and if we wanted to track them, we could, whatever. But we didn't. Um, some cool things in here. Very easy. I think you can pick this game up and learn it fairly easily. So that's Moonbase Alpha. Caveat is that it's actually a good game. I think if you like this sort of thing, you're going to like it, but it's not for me. So Purge. Look at the components for Moon Phase, Moon Base Alpha. You have this really cool cover on this. I really like the artwork in this uh, cover. This is a Victory Point game, so you're always going to get the uh, slip cover over the game. And then you're going to get this box that you open up. And this is just how Victory Point games are, if you've never seen one. You are going to get a rule book. And there's always kind of really like GMT books or an instruction manual for something. It's always like 4.2 budget expenses, which to me makes it read like a drill instruction manual, but um, it's very easy to reference to. And this is one of their easier games, so it's not very difficult. So the rule book is kind of small. Uh, you're going to get four regular, kind of undersized six sided die. Uh, this is going to be a... Let me show you some of this stuff. So the cards, they almost feel like a business card, to be honest, kind of quality. Um, Victory Point Games isn't about the quality of the components. It's about the game itself. So um, kind of generic, but very neat looking. I still like the way these look. And this is what you roll. Very easy to understand. This is just flavor text. So um, once you kind of get into it, it's not that difficult. Um... Okay, with most Victory Point games, you are going to get a paper map, if you prefer, which I don't. And you're going to get a puzzle map that you can put together here. And some people are going to have their preferences. My table is not exactly flat because there's a thing right there. But then each player will get one yellow, one green, the exact same thing. It gives you all the information, literally all the information you need to play the game, the combat table, and then where you would place your reinforcements and losses. This is literally all you need. Once you understand the rules and how it goes, really this is all you need, sincerely. Um, each side you're going to get chits. Let me show you some of these. So these are be little cheap tillywinks. Um, that will be used for suppression. And this is a chit based game, so you're gonna have a bunch of these little laser cut chits, which is pretty normal in victory point games. Um, if you're not used to chits, very different than miniatures. And that's really the components. The chits are nice, you know, you have to be okay with the way a victory point game works or looks. They they work nice. They play well if you like this sort of thing. They're always very good, um, but the presentation is not going to be what most of us are used to. This is about as far away from Fantasy Flight as you're going to get. So uh, everything you get is nice. It's just you have to be ready for the for the victory point game stuff. The rules for Moon, Moon Base Alpha are pretty easy. You'll get in and you'll start playing. Just kind of, I just got it on the table and I started fiddling with it, going, okay, this is what this option is, what that option was. Very easy. There were a couple things I wish would have been in the rule book, like when you go into battle and you flip them over, do you reflip them over? Um, I, I was a little torn exactly how the media worked. I didn't really understand that perfectly. Um, I think I got the gist of it done, what it's supposed to do. But I do wonder if I got it right or not. And I'm sure, I'm about 90% sure if I sat down with the designer and played it, he'd be like, yeah, this is exactly how it plays. Because it's just intuitive and it makes sense. 
But that was more me as a gamer maybe thinking it goes this way than well, I can get out of the rules. But otherwise, the rule book is good. I've never really had a problem with Victory Point game rules. They're going to be 1.012, 4.212. You know, easy to reference, but kind of, you know, might read like a dry instruction manual to your VCR or your DVD player or your Blu-ray player or your Roku or something. Okay, here's the game set up. I'm just going to show you kind of how it works and the flow of the game. I'm not going to go over every single rule, but there really aren't a lot of rules in this game, so I think that you'll pick it up pretty easy. So, first of all, you're going to push this on the victory point chart. And this is the victory point chart. It's really a stock price, but if it gets all the way to the top, you win. If it gets all the way to the bottom, you're bankrupt and you lose. This is a turn marker. It can go up or down based on what people choose, but each round it will go up one. If it gets to the end, the game is over, and whoever has the highest stock price, i.e. victory points, wins the game. The game is pretty simple. You're going to have three different people or things or you can bring out. So you can bring out the PMCs, which are infantry. You can the MCUs, which is kind of the medium weight ones, and you can bring out the crawlers, which are slower but more powerful. These guys move faster. So the one, the, the score in the bottom, the five, four, three in the bottom right corner, is the movement. Four, three, five in the bottom left is the armor. The at the top, the three, two, one is the cost of buy it and bring it on the board. And these will come out striped side up when you put them on the board because you're never going to know what their combat value is. So this crawler is 6, MCU is 4, and PMC is 2. And these go up to 9, I think these go up to 5, and these go up to 2. So you never know exactly what they're going to be when you get into a fight. And the game has a little bit of luck involved and there's a little bit going on here. Um, it's not a straight up just you know exactly all the information. You're also going to have these cards, which look a little more confusing than they are. When you, if you successfully put it out when making armor saves, reroll is also one or two. Each one will do something a little bit different. Flavor text doesn't matter. When you try to bring it out, you just roll two sided die, plus any of the lab symbols that you may find or have or collect. And you add that to your dice, and then the red hyphen subtraction sign means you failed. The plus signs mean success, and these arrows means your stock price goes up or down. So there can be a little bit of luck to that too. But the main component of the game is going to be at the beginning of your turn, you're going to get $4 plus each one of these mine symbols that you have or collect or control. Um, so you can use that to buy the people, like I showed you. For 6 bucks. you can move your... your stock price up. For a dollar you can move this up or down making the game longer or shorter. Um, or you can um, let me show you on the player mat. So right here tells you everything you do. So you get four bucks plus that. Your reinforcements move the media. So that's one. You can move your media anywhere you want on the board. And this is kind of an important concept. We're going to bring up this little media chit. If the media watches anyone get killed, when those losses, it basically hurts you twice as much. If you look down here, anytime somebody's lost, your stock price goes down once. But if the media watches it, you go down two. So it's kind of interesting. Um, on your turn, you can do just a couple things, really tw two, move or fight, or you can upgrade. So here's how this works. You will have four of these little chits. And they'll have one, two, three, and moon. And you guys are going to take turns placing these on the board in any one you want. So maybe I'll put the three down first, and I'll place it here. And maybe the two, maybe I'll place it here. And then maybe I'll place the moon next. And I'll place it here. And then I'll place the star here. And what will happen, in turn order, you'll say, flip over your number one. 
So then you flip over your number one, the one that has only one star. And that means you can now take an action with this place. Now I could have put two here if I wanted to, it didn't matter. I just kind of spread mine out for illustration purposes. But I can move or attack. So maybe I want to move with these guys, movement one, two, three, four, five. And I'm kind of getting across the board or whatever. Uh, then the number two would go, you can move or you can fight. I'll get into fighting. So the main part of the game is you're just kind of moving and taking the area control. Now you could also put one of these on your card. You'd put it face down so the other person can't see. And when it saves the third person's turn, you would take this. And then you would roll the die. If successful, then you, it just becomes face up and you get what it says. And you do what it says. The other thing is that you can fight the other people, okay? And I'm going to kind of show you how fighting works. So what you would do if you were in a fight, let's say I had a fight of, I'm going to show you a very e easy example. So hold on one second. If you had these two people in a fight, three and five, their combat strength, three and five is eight. Do you see at the top? Three, five is eight. Okay. Then I would go to this, eight, eight to 12. Then I would roll two dice and I rolled four. So I had an eight, four is a suppression. So that means it was suppressed. If I had rolled a seven, they would have retreated. And if it would have rolled eight or nine, they would have destroyed, but they may retreat. And then the D1 tells me they must destroy at least one person automatically, no matter what. With a the destroy, they can retreat or be destroyed. It's really that simple. And then if you look, I'll show you another character. They have an armor. So if I wanted to block it, I would roll one die and I would have to roll five or higher, which I did, so that would have blocked it. And combat is really just, honestly, that easy. It's a little bit to it. If you're in a certain amount of steps, you might lose two on your dice. If you're long range, plus one, if you're suppressed. If, 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 if somebody ever gets two suppressions, then they die. Uh, suppressions come off at the end of the round. But really, that's all you're doing. Really, all you're doing is moving around the board, fighting for these area to move up your stock price, and then there'll be some combat over the areas that they want and they become more valuable as the cards perhaps will put out more resources on the board. And there's some NPC stuff you can get. You can build additional research labs. You can get uh, mobile devices and some stuff. But it's a very simple little area control combat game. Who should buy this game? Maybe somebody looking for a two-player game. You're looking for something a little different if you're a real, Euro player. Uh, two-player games are kind of hard to come by. Maybe you're wanting to try out a simple war game. Not so much with the Memoir 44. You're looking to go a little step up. to see. Maybe if you want to do a combat commander down the road or an ASL, this might be a good place to start with Moonbase Alpha. Or you just like the idea of fighting on Mars. That's pretty cool and, and I think a unique theme. Um, you know right off the bat if you're going to like the rules for a victory point game if you ever played them before. But... This might not be a two-player battle game to start out with. The components are easy to understand. Everything makes a lot of sense. There's dice rolling, so that's going to be familiar to people. Uh, Moonbase Alpha, while it perks for me, I could see it being for a lot of people. Or at least uh, you, you're going to look at this and you're going to know if you like it or not. No miniatures. Uh, things look a little bit bland. It's got the victory point components. But real solid gameplay.